here with Dr. Romano doing a roadmap for the DAT. Hi, come on around. I'd like to do a roadmap with you and show you how you would do these when you get to these in the Dad Destroyer book. This roadmap will test a lot of the reactions that you're going to need on the DAT, and I'll show you how to go about doing them. Anytime we do a reaction, we want to make sure we know what the products are going to be. We know the reagents, and of course, we have knowledge of the stereochemistry. In the first example, we're going to take what's called propene. And if we go straight up with it and we react it with D2 and platinum, that would be the same as H2 and platinum, except D is just a heavier isotope. The double bond is going to open up, and we put the two Ds across the double bond in what we call a syn fashion. This reaction is said to be very, very stereoselective. Stereoselective means that one particular stereoisomer is going to be in predominance. And as you can see, the stereoselectivity is going to show us that the two Ds are coming in from the same face. Once you get the two Ds put on, you then go back to the compound and see if there's a chiral carbon. Indeed, there is a chiral carbon right here. So that means that this molecule would be produced as the two enantiomers, or what we call the racemic mixture, and therefore I write plus minus. The next reaction is what we call ozonolysis. My professor said it the best. Ozone acts as a chemical knife. And what it's going to do, it's going to cut the molecule and oxidize the carbon. You can either use ozone, zinc, and acid, or you may see on the dad ozone and dimethyl sulfide. Ozone is the main ingredient. The other two ingredients you can think of it as if you're a bartender, this is Coke and this is Pepsi. Essentially, it's not going to matter whether you use this or this in the secondary workup step. But what you're going to do is you're going to cut the molecule and you're going to oxidize. And as you can see here, you get the two carbonyl compounds. If, however, you used hot KMnO4 and acid, that's going to do something a little bit different. It cuts the molecule in a similar fashion, but the aldehyde can't survive. The aldehyde would oxidize further into the carboxylic acid. And if the double bond is terminal, you don't get the aldehyde, but you get CO2 gas. You got to be very, very careful on those two oxidative procedures. So ozonolysis, you're going to go for the carbonyls where hot KMnO4 will give you the carboxy acid, and if terminal, CO2. The next reaction adds two OHs across a double bond, syn. And you would look for osmium tetroxide with workup. This is the key ingredient, OSO4, or you could use dilute, make sure it's dilute and cold, KMnO4. The osmium is very toxic, so not many people use that in small labs. Um, but what we would do is we would simply put the two OHs going in the same direction. And once again, I've generated a chiral carbon, so you would get a racemic mixture. So the two ways to add on OHs, syn, would be osmium and dilute KMnO4. If you wanted to add it on anti, which I didn't have here, what you would do, if you go to the destroyer, you'll see it, you would have made the epoxide first after you treated this with something like MCPBA or peracetic acid, and then you would acidify it. In this example, HBr, that's a straightforward Markovnikov addition. The carbon with the most H's, you put the H, and the other gets the Br. And that's Markovnikov. There's no branching, so there's not going to be a shift. In another tape, I actually show you how to do a shift on something like that and in the destroyer. And we check for chirality, and there's no chiral carbon, so we would only get the 2-bromopropane. HBr and peroxide does an anti makovnikov addition. When you do anti makovnikov the carbon with the most H's gets the bromine, the other gets the H. That's a short bed reaction for the exam. Make sure you understand it, and it only works with HBr. HCl, HI will not do the reaction. Only with HBr, the reaction is sufficiently exothermic. With the other HCl, HI, it would be too endothermic, and therefore it's not going to go. 
these two reactions that we just did are what we call regioselective. Regioselective means that it produces one particular constitutional isomer as the major product. So for example, when we wanted to get the two bromo isomer, we used the Makovnikov addition. One bromo isomer, we used the anti Makovnikov addition, and we call these regioselective reactions. Bromine in water simply adds on a bromine and an OH group anti to one another. So the carbon with the most H's gets the bromine and the other carbon gets the OH. These are stereoselective reactions, meaning one particular stereoisomer is seen. And in this example, we have a chiral carbon generated and therefore this would be a racemic mixture. So the bromine and the OH add on with bromine and water or it would have went with chlorine and water and the two groups go on opposite. If you press this a little further with SOCl2 and pyridine or PCL3, the OH is simply replaced with a chlorine and usually that would be an inversion. I'm not gonna kill you in this example, but hypothetically, if this was an R and you hit it with SOCl2 and pyridine or PCL3, the stereochemistry would become S through an inversion. Bromine and CCL4, this would simply add on two bromines, and once again, the two bromines are on opposite sides for an anti-addition. We check for chirality. We have a chiral carbon right there, and therefore, we would get this as a racemic mixture. This is a famous chemical test for an alkene. An orange-brown color would become colorless upon addition of the alkene. This bromine and carbon test, CCL4, is a very important test. For the DAT, make sure you know that. Purple to brown would be if you use cold dilute KMnO4. So you got two tests to add to your collection for alkenes. In the next example, we're going to do what we call an oxymercuration demercuration. This is one of my favorite ways to add on water to an alkene for the simple reason there's no rearrangement. It proceeds through what we call a mercurinium ion. Check that out when you get to the destroyer. You may thank me for that question someday. When you have HGOAC, water, NABH4 on workup, it looks complicated, but all it's going to do, it adds an H and an OH, and the H and the OH, you can envision, come on from opposite sides. They come on opposite sides, but it's a Markovnikov addition of water, and we get very good yields with that. If you want to go anti-Makovnikov, this is where you would use hydroboration, developed by Herbert C. Brown of Purdue. And in, hydro, in hydroboration, the carbon with the most H's gets the OH, and the other gets the H. This type of question is, or this type of reaction is highly stereospecific, meaning you get a specific stereoisomer. And what happens is the H and the OH that come in, come in sin. So it's an anti makovnikov addition, but the groups that come in anti makovnikov come in sin. You can't really see it that well from this structure, but if you did it in a ring, you would be able to see it a little more clearer. So you're going to add the groups anti makovnikov and then just make sure the groups that you added come in sin. Finally, my favorite way to add on or to make a cyclopropane ring is the Simmons-Smith reaction. Here we have diodomethane. You could also use dichloro or dibromomethane with zinc, copper, and ether in the solution and mix them up. And you would simply add on this carbon across the double bond and you would add a cyclopropyl group. You could have also done it with CH2N2 in heat, that's diazomethane. That is a great way to blow yourself up though. I never like to fool around with diazomethane. So the Simmons-Smith reaction is way better. And then finally, I finished the reaction off. Bromine and light simply removes the tertiary hydrogen and we simply put on a bromine. I hope this helps on what I think some of the key reactions you're gonna need for the DAT exam. All right, that'll end this clip. 
I'll see you when we get to the study group if you got any questions on it. Bye-bye.